Do you ever have those mornings that you wake up and no matter what you do to your hair, you can't stand it? Also, do you ever have those days that you schedule a haircut and the day that you're going in for a haircut, that's the day that your hair absolutely looks the best? That That's par for the course for me. Hey guys, it's Brett. So uh, thanks for dropping by my channel. Today I am doing my January wrap up. 14 books I read this month, which might be a new record for me, and I read some slim things, which helped that along. Um, a really good month, so let's not waste any time and 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 talk. I'm going to start with a little backlist first um, that I started earlier in the month, so it seems appropriate that that's what I'm going to begin with now, starting with <clears throat> Jenny Jackson's Pineapple Street. Jenny Jackson is one of the uh, senior editors at Knopf. She is a delightful person, for starters, and she wrote a absolutely delightful confection of a book. Um, this is about a very uh, privileged, wealthy, waspy family um, who live in Brooklyn Heights. The entry point for the book is the wife of um, the son of the family, who is not kind of this blue blood woman. She was raised very middle class. So we're seeing a lot of this through her eyes. But there's three narratives that exist in this. It's hers and then the two sisters and the stories bounces back between the three of them. Um, I really enjoy this. I listened to this on audio with uh, my favorite, one of my favorite narrators and consummate actress, Marin Ireland. Um, and she's just amazing. And if you're an audiobook person, I would I would highly recommend it. You know, it's not there's no great um, drama that exists in there. It's just a very kind of fun book. It was a great way to kind of kick off January. All right. So also, I'm going to put on my glasses because otherwise we're going to get to something and I'm going to be struggling to read it. Next book is Unsub by Meg Gardner. This came out in the hardback in 2017. You know, when I you, I used to read just like thrillers. I was a big fan of Michael Conley and Robert Cray were my two big ones. Um, more than more than any of anybody else, but I always just loved a good thriller. A lot of people I saw talking about how great Meg Gardner was. So I wanted to go back to this beginning, which is a series of hers um, with this detective whose name is Caitlin Hendricks. She's a narcotics detective. This is a serial killer that her father tried to put away didn't successfully put him away, and now he's resurfaced, or is it a copycat, and now she's trying to catch the person. Um, generally, I enjoyed this. I thought some of it was really over the top, and sometimes it's this trope of having serial killers that are so beyond brilliant that, um, and also have great means to create elaborate um, traps as well as... Uh, just the kind of cat and mouse catch that they set up for their um, detective. And so some of that was a little um, stretchy for me, but overall I enjoyed it. I don't know necessarily that I would continue with the series. Um, it didn't. I didn't love it that much, but it's not bad. And I think if you're a fan of the genre, from what I can see of other people who are big fans of the genre, this is one of the better series. So there you go. Speaking of series, um, everyone in my family has killed someone. This is the first by Benjamin Stevenson. I'm coming to you recording this on um, publication day Tuesday, January 30th. And his new book, Everyone on This Train is a Suspect, just came out, which I'm halfway through um, and enjoying. This was a really fun book. Again, listen to this on audio, which it's Australian. And so that was kind of fun. Um, I don't think it reinvents the wheel or anything like that, but this is a somewhat of a locked room mystery of a family that is snowed into a resort and um, murder starts to happen. His point of view, it's this first person narrative. He's very wry and dry and cheeky and it's funny. So it's, uh, it's fun. Okay, Water by John Boyne. Um, this is the first of four what he's calling elemental novels. The next one is going to be Earth. Uh, effectively, it's a short story. It just it goes to about 160 pages. 
it's fantastic um again i'm i'm <laughs> i'm obsessed with the irish writers right now you know the hearts invisible furies is one of my favorite books um but this is about a woman who arrives on a small island uh, to get away from her past. And it slowly revealed what that is. It's a first person narrative. It's really well done. I mean, John Boyne taps on some themes that he has addressed before. And I don't even want to really talk about it because I don't want to give anything in the book away. But if you're familiar with some of his other work, you'll get it. Um, but he's an exceptional writer, and this is uh, also an exceptional book. I, I I was completely taken with it, extremely moved by it, um, and knowing what the next book is, it's a character that appears in this first book, who is the second story. So I'm figuring that between the four, uh, they'll all be kind of interconnected, which is really, really, really cool. But anyway, I don't think this is out in the States yet. I actually got this from um, the UK. So, uh, Bianca Bosker's Get the Picture. This comes out February 6th. And you know what? I almost, I almost did a separate video of just this and one other nonfiction book that I'm going to talk about separately because... You know, there are so many people out there who say they're not a reader of nonfiction. And I think there's this stigma attached to nonfiction that it's dry, that it's boring. And to that, I say, you are reading the wrong things. I loved this book. Bianca Bosker um, wrote a New York Times bestselling book called Cork Dork, where she's a journalist and she immersed herself in that book, Cork Dork, in the world of wine, eventually becoming a sommelier. In Get the Picture, she dives into the art world hardcore. She works at a gallery. She works with a series of artists. She gets into performance art and with a sequence that's so hilarious and like unbelievable. Um, but not only, look at all the tabs, not only is it so incredibly informative and makes you think about art in such a different way and questions the idea about what is art, who gets to define what is art, um, but it's also, she's so damn funny and charming. Um, she will be coming on the Gaze Reading podcast, and uh, we had a great conversation. I'm I'm a little obsessed with her. I think this would be an incredible um, series for, like, FX, kind of a, a, a sex in the city, but with art. Um, and thank you to Viking for this copy. But check this out, February 6th. It's, it's really, really so, so, so good. Uh, the Laughter by Sonora Ja. This is one of the books that is on the long list for the Aspen Words Prize. And so many people, this kind of was released right at the end of last year, and so many people I knew read this and were loving it. And so I really wanted to get to it last year and didn't. Again, listen to this on audio, which totally works. It is so good. I bought the book after I listened to the audio. I loved it that much. This is about a tenured white mid-50s professor at a liberal arts university and his co-worker who is a muslim woman who he is obsessed with um however he is such a despicable character that it's written for comic effect it's so disgusting but I don't want to go too much into the plot because it so deliciously reveals itself. We know from the beginning that there's some kind of event, tragic event that's going to take place. However, we don't know what that is yet. And it takes you know, the book to figure that out. In the meantime, you're in this guy's head and it's leading right up to um, when the political the election between Trump and Hillary Clinton. So that's kind of the tenor of the country. Uh, it's really smart. It's, you know, it's kind of bam on the nose. Uh, and it's I think it would be a great book for a book discussion as well, for a book club discussion, because um, there's a lot to unpack with this book. So really enjoyed that. Also really enjoyed My Friends by Sean Medar, Medar 
Um, I, I talked about this before. This is about two uh, two friends who are Libyan who are going to school in London. They one day go to a protest uh, at the Libyan embassy in London protesting Gaddafi and um, they get shot. And it's actually a real incident, this um, shooting that happened outside of this uh, of the um, embassy. Um, and so that's the first half of the book. But what it really is, is setting up our ideas of uh, country and family and um, leaving your past behind uh, and friendship and um, immigration. And it's it's really beautiful. It is a languid book. It's not something that you're going to fly through. Um, he's a really beautiful writer, but I say that so people don't get the impression that this is not a page turner. It's a really thoughtful meditation, but it really worked for me and I really liked it. Okay, sorry, reaching, reaching. Um, this is the other nonfiction book that I was talking about. Grief is for People by Sloane Crosley. Sloane Crosley, um, I had to look over my shoulder because the book was on the floor, wrote this book called Classic. I'd never read anything of hers before, but going back to um, Jenny Jackson and talking to Jenny Jackson. This was a book that Jenny Jackson was pitching, saying Jenny Jackson was on the Gays Reading Podcast. She was talking about Sloan as a friend of hers and what a great book it is. So MCD had sent me a copy, and thank you. So I immediately thought, I have to read this now. Um, and I'm so glad I did. This is Sloan Crosby's memoir about when she started off at a, in publishing, um, before she really started writing full time, she worked in the publicity department at a publishing house, and she um, met this man who becomes her best friend, who is the the senior uh, manager of publicity. They become best friends. He's this very funny, sharp witted gay man, older, um, and they forge this incredible bond and he commits suicide and this book is kind of her reckoning with how she coped and is coping with the loss um it's beautiful it's it at times really funny it's an incredible portrait that she creates of this man who i immediately had to like look up on instagram or find what i could and went down this rabbit hole of looking at his instagram page but um, it's so smart and so searing and so um, insightful and just uh, really wonderfully done. Um, so this comes out uh, February 27th. I would uh, encourage you to read it. It's not a depressing book. Certainly there are moments that are sad, but it's not anything that um, kind of wallows um, and the interesting thing about it is it opens with her home being robbed, her apartment being robbed, and that starts this whole series of events, and it goes up through the lockdown from COVID. So a really, 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 really well done book. All right. Um, another book that came out yesterday here in the States and is the Jenna pick for the month is Dolly Alderton's Good Material Again, I had never read any Dolly Alderton. I know, you know, she's a huge thing and she's like a big deal in the UK. Um, she is best friends with Caroline O'Donoghue who wrote The Rachel Incident, which I absolutely loved. And you could see why, because she's just a delightful, delightful, delightful person. Um, so smart. She's been referred to as the Nora Ephron of her generation. Um, and I understand that as well. This Here's what I'll say, and I heard this pitched yesterday on Jenna's show as a rom-com. It is not a rom-com. Uh, it is about a relationship that the story begins at the end of it. It's a breakup. It's told from the point of view of Andy, who is a stand-up comic, comic who's kind of in a middling point in his career, not going forward, not becoming the kind of bigger deal that he hopes to be or that like one of his other fellow comics is becoming. Um, his life is kind of stalling out at 35 and he's just been dumped by his girlfriend and it's him getting over her. This voice in here reminded me very much of David Nichols. And if you're a fan of 
any of his work, a little bit also of Nick Hornsby. That's what it feels like. And if those books are appealing to you, then this would completely appeal to you. His ex-girlfriend, Jen, is throughout the book, but it's not really her story until the end. And her story and the kind of what she does, I thought was just really, really brilliant. Um, and a brilliant and from a character point of view, too. So uh, a really good book, but not a rom-com. All right. Um, Dead in Long Beach, California by Vanita Blackburn. And thank you to MCD for this. This is a really interesting book that didn't all work for me. It's very um, kind of uh, experimental. I don't know if that's the word. It's about a woman who is a writer who um, she writes on a television show, but her big claim to fame is um, she has a graphic novel that's very popular, kind of about a kind of cyborg-esque bounty hunter. Um, but she goes to visit her brother one day and finds that he has committed suicide. Like suddenly I have a theme, um, committed suicide. And so it's about her grief again, whatever, um, clearly it coming into themes, but it's about her grief and how she copes with it and the way she copes with it. Get ready. She assumes his identity. She takes his phone and he's getting messages from his daughter, who is this woman's niece, who's a, who's a grown woman and like in her early twenties. And she begins to text to her niece as her brother. Um, so it kind of follows her over the next several days as she's kind of going through this grieving process. Coupled with this are excerpts from her graphic novel, like the, the kind of the descriptions and the story. So it's weird, I, you know, and then she's also flashing back to her own childhood, her, her growing up, her dawning realization that she's queer um, and her brother and his relationship with the, the woman who had his daughter, um, which to me, all of those parts of the book were the most successful. So it's a really interesting book. I, I wouldn't say it's for everybody, but I'm really interested to see what Vanita Blackburn comes out with next because it is experimental. There's the word. There's experimental aspects of this, um, which again, I think is really going to work for some people. For me, it just, it didn't totally knock it out of the park, but interesting read. Another book that really, this bummed me out, um, The Words That Remain by Stenio Gardell, which won the National Book Award for Translated Literature. And I have a friend who I love on, on, on Bookstagram who said, oh my God, you've got to let me know when you read this because I just thought it was incredible. And so I was so excited. And this is about... Um, two men who young young men boys who fall in love with each other and um one day are caught by one of their fathers um in a compromising position and they're separated and they're separated kind of forever after that moment and the one man grows up always thinking about this this boy that he loved and the only thing he has is a remembrance of him is a letter that this boy wrote to him which he has never been able to read because he's never learned to read so the words that remain obviously are, are, are referencing that letter so it's his story now as an older man when he finally he goes to classes he learns to read and is going to find out what happened I don't know. I was so disappointed. I didn't have any connection to this thing. I thought there was some beautiful writing, almost like poetry at times. Um, you know, there's there's not a lot of, um, you know, there's there's long sentences. Um, so at times I was wondering who I was actually, um, who was speaking at moments. It just didn't work for me. Um, and it was a bummer. Because uh, I wanted, like I said, I wanted to love it. It seemed like something that was going to be so up my alley, but I don't know. It just, um, and I felt like there was no payoff. I got to the end and I wrote to a friend of mine who had read it and I was like, am I missing something? And he's like, I felt the exact same way. So this was a bummer. Final two books. Oh no, I have three more. So um, Piglet by Lottie Hazel. 
Uh, this was an interesting book, and at first when I finished it, I was like, ah, and then I thought about it more. It's it's really interesting. This is about a woman who is about to get married, um, happily in her relationship. Um, she works uh, at a book publishing company that publishes cookbooks. She's an, she is an up-and-coming editor. Um, she also loves to cook. Her nickname, and what everyone calls her Piglet, is kind of from an incident all the way back from her childhood <clears throat> that kind of carries over. Before the wedding, and the book starts as a countdown to wedding day, her husband tells her something that says, I have to tell you something before we get married. That thing is never revealed, but we don't know what it is, but it derails her in a big way, and it changes the entire trajectory of her life. So she kind of goes through this rapid, very dark descent. Um, it was a mixed bag for me. I liked a lot of this book and it's extremely propulsive because you don't know what was said and you don't know what's going to result from this and is she going to go through with the marriage. So it is very much a page turner. Um, it's also one of these things you really can't read hungry because the descriptions of food in here are sick, crazy. Um, I had problems with a little bit of the backstory in some of this, uh, which knocked it a bit for me, but ultimately I thought this was a really, um, a really interesting novel, just a darker turn than I imagined. I thought it was going to be a little more whimsy, a little more, um, light, but no. Um, and thank you to Henry Holt for this. And this comes out in March in the States. <clears throat> also out in March is Like Happiness by Ursula Villarreal Mora. I loved this book. I loved, excuse me, I loved the whole world that she created. This is a kind of a memory piece that goes back and forth between the present when um, she is living in Chile with her partner to the past when she was a student who gets involved, a student at university who gets involved with a brilliant writer and their relationship. It is it is so good. It is so good. It is such a confident, assured, and fantastic debut. It's a great character piece. I loved this woman's voice. I was so with her and rooting for her. Um, it was a big, big, big surprise. Um, and I would say pick this up when it comes out. Um, and thank you to Celadon Books for this. But really, really, really. I, again, I love this world of academia. I loved the world of literature, clearly, and her voice and the way she references writers and talks about writers and, you know, all real people just fleshed it out so much more and made these people so real to me. I oh, just loved it. And speaking of love, the last book I want to talk about is Hard by a Great Forest by Leo Vardiashvili. I had to like look down to read that name because that's not an easy name to uh, to get. <laughs> this came out yesterday, the 31st of January. Today, that's today. But by the time this is up, it'll be tomorrow. Whatever, you get it. This book is one of 10 new novelists that The Observer uh in the UK does every year they'll pick 10 new emerging writers and their great works. This is one of those books. And by the way, that's a great list, which I will have down in my show notes so you can access it because there are a lot of really interesting um, authors in there. Some of our, some of those books I've already read, but I thought this was so wonderful. First of all, I was drawn to the cover, which let's talk is so beautiful. Um, and that's what first drew me in. And then I read the synopsis um, and then I got an advance um, audio copy from Penguin Random House. So thank you for that. And it's read by Luke Thompson, who I don't know if any of you watch Bridgerton. He was the oldest brother in Bridgerton. And, or for those of you in the UK, he just starred in a production of A Little Life um, that was in London. He's immensely talented. But by the way, I never even thought that he was like this talented based on like the one thing I've seen him do. He gives an extraordinary reading. The book is about a, a man named Sabo who lives in um, the UK, who, when he was a child, grew up in uh, Georgia. This is like 
Soviet Georgia and ends up getting um, his father and his brother and, and he escape, leaving behind their mother because her passport had expired and they didn't have enough money to kind of bribe the correct people to get her out. The idea was always that his father would get a job um, once they got out, raise money and then bring her back. Well, he raises that money but gets swindled out of it and in the, inter in, in the intervening years, she dies. Um, the father kind of goes into this, you know, hole of despair and finally decides to go back to the country to kind of uh, get some closure and put this to rest, but ends up disappearing. So Sabo's brother goes over to look for the father and he disappears. So Sabo has to go over to find his father and his brother, who he suddenly finds his brother has left behind these clues as to where he is. So it becomes a mystery novel. It becomes somewhat of an adventure novel. He gets hooked into this man who is one of the best characters I've read in a long time called Nodor. Imagine like a Georgian Hagar. And he is a cab driver who he becomes friends with. And the two of them set out looking for his family. Nodor has his own past and that comes into play. Um, Sabo is also dealing with the ghosts of his past of dead relatives who are kind of appearing to him. It is so good, y'all. On top of everything else, there's been a flood. Um, and so there's zoo animals all over the city. It is, you know, he leans hard into the Hansel and Gretel story um, and Baba Yaga. I just thought it was so inventive so such great storytelling so moving um for me all of the boxes are checked so i think that was my favorite book this month um it is out now and i would you know if you get the audio you're in for a treat um i'm gonna get the book too because i just want it on my shelf but um that's it so that is January. Let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know if any of these sound interesting to you. I have a, I'm, I'm going to um, record in the next day or so my February hopefuls. I um, have been so MIA this month because I started back to work, which has been all consuming, but really hope to rectify that in some way and come on um, more regularly because I so appreciate you guys. I appreciate you responding. Um, uh, you're so positive and, and it's just so nice. Uh, and so I really appreciate it. And I want you guys to know that. Um, so yeah, anyway, thanks for dropping by. Have a great day and uh, I will see you all shortly.